And the big gods arrived. All-knowing and all-powerful gods who saw everything you did. The mystery is, why? Where did those big gods come from? And for that matter, why are they still here? Psychologist has a theory. He told Raven Tungakai that any explanation of religion has to answer two major puzzles. We have minds and brains that are calibrated to live in small groups of relatives and friends and allies, yet we live in a world that is mostly defined by interactions with complete strangers. So that's the first puzzle. The second puzzle that intrigued me was uh, the fact that of all the possible religions that exist in the world, it seems like just a few account for most believers in the world. So I was trying to answer these two puzzles. So that's the prevailing notion, but uh, here is the thing. Uh, a few decades ago, there was this discovery in south-central Turkey, very near the Syrian border. Uh, it's an archaeological site called Gopekli Tepe. What's really fascinating about this site is that it may give us some answers to this question and may turn this idea on its head. So Gopekli Tepe is uh, about 11,500 years old. So it's thousands of years older than the oldest pyramids or the Stonehenge. It was built by hunter-gatherers that did not have agriculture. Yet it's the world's oldest place for religious worship. It's the world's oldest temple. And do we know what the prevailing religion of the time was? We don't really know. It's, it's very sketchy. We see some uh, pillars, stone pillars, that seem to indicate some animal worship and some ritualistic behavior. What's really striking about this site is that it's a pre-agricultural site. So is it possible that the temple came before the city? What are these big gods that you refer to? So these are the gods of the world religions that are, we now live with. Uh, these are gods that are uh, powerful, they're omniscient, they can know your mind, they are um, intervening, they are moralizing, they care about human morality, and they punish and reward human behavior. Because, well, a few things. One is that uh, to the extent that these, these kinds of beliefs encourage interaction and cooperation among strangers, then that would give us at least a partial explanation for this a remarkable expansion of human, human group size. Although today's world is a more complex world and there we have created other institutions to uh, encourage uh, large-scale cooperation. So we have lots of secular institutions that basically have taken over from religious uh, sources of cooperation to basically do the same thing. So some societies have climbed the ladder of religion and then kicked it away. A good example is Northern Europe, Scandinavian societies where majorities are not believers, don't have religious uh, beliefs anymore, but they live in highly cooperative societies, and largely because they have created institutions that play that role, that encourage people to cooperate with complete strangers. Well, for instance, like what, what kind of institutions are you talking about? I'm talking about courts, police, credit, trade markets. So I'm more likely to uh, trust my neighbor if I know that if I had a problem with my neighbor, I could call the police and the police can intervene, for example. Hmm. So policing institutions are a very important element of large-scale cooperation because uh, in hunter-gatherer societies, there is no police you can call because you don't need police you can call. You can resolve your differences individually. But as societies grow larger, you need some institutions to come and settle disputes. And you have to trust these institutions. So you're saying then that thousands of years ago, big gods helped humans cooperate. Now you have secular institutions. And the, common, uh, the commonality between both is that both keep people honest and, and truthful because there's an element of surveillance and accountability built in. Yeah, so I think that secular societies are surprisingly, surprisingly similar, more similar than you think, to, uh, to the religious societies that they, they succeeded. Instead of watchful deities, you have watchful institutions, norms that encourage cooperation as long as you're part of the in-group, part of the community. Um, so they're not that different, even though it, often people think of them as the opposites or, or clashing, but um, they are largely serving the same functions. Hmm. Well, I have to ask, if you were to compare secular societies with perhaps more religious ones that believed in big gods, I mean, what's more effective in making people cooperate, big gods or secular institutions? Well, if you're... Uh, if your definition is something like corruption or rule of law, then clearly secular societies are doing better now. Not all secular societies have strong rule of law, but many do. 
So as societies give up on uh, religion, they do so partly because they are developing alternatives to religion. And in modern society, in modern world, that seems to actually work pretty well. It makes me wonder, I mean, as, as more and more places around the world strengthen their secular institutions and, you know, establish the rule of law, do you think it's inevitable that someday we won't need big gods or religion? Possibly. I mean, it uh, depends. If you look at Scandinavia, is, is that's the best case scenario, where you, you see um, very strong institutions, rule of law, cooperative societies, very high trust levels, and, and quite a decline of religion. Japan might be an example like that. Uh, the question, the big question that I don't have the answer to is, is the world moving in that direction inevitably, or is this a temporary blip in historical changes? Um, there are other things to consider. For example, as societies secularize, fertility rates decline quite massively. So even though secularization is happening in the world, at the same time, these secularized societies are, if anything, shrinking because of declining fertility rates, whereas societies that are not secularizing, they're maintaining their religious levels, they are actually expanding because of high fertility rates. So that will factor in into these kinds of calculations about the future of religion, because one very powerful way that religion is transmitted is from parents to children. That's the question that I explored in, in uh, my book. Big gods. And now, an experiment. Maybe for you and your kids. You put a snake and a rat in a box and you ask the children who's in the box, the rat and the snake. And you've told them beforehand they're both hungry. The box shakes. And uh, now you ask the children who's in the box and they'll say, well, just a snake. Where's the rat? <laughs> 